It's a real small world, man, and it's crazy too. Last night, uh, me and some of my friends, we had went to this spot in downtown Fort Lauderdale. So we was there for a little while, and we were getting ready to leave. So when I was walking out, uh, the security guard he was like, "Hey, hey, hey, team, keep it clean." I said, "Oh, hey, what's up, baby? What's going on, man?" So that that was super cool. And he was super, super, super cool, and super nice too, man. So shout out to you. Anyway, um, Ravens fans, we uh, tend to be all on one accord a lot of times. Uh, because I think we're getting back into thirsty mode. It's thirsty season. Because now a lot of players are being released. A lot of players are getting cut. A lot of players are being told they're going to get cut. Uh, whether it's pre-June 1st, post-June whatever. They are going to be free agents and be available. So you know us as Ravens fans. You know we want everybody to come to the Ravens. So this is no different. And with the secondary. The Baltimore Ravens secondary uh, last season, and it's so frustrating because they had injuries. Marlon Humphrey missed a bunch of time. There were different guys that missed time, really just with the defense as a whole. Uh, but they were still the best defense, and it, it just feels like such a waste. All that just went to waste. Yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating to think about it. But anyway, the secondary. Um, got a lot of question marks to the secondary. Rocky Seen, free agent. Um, Ronald Darby, free agent. Arthur Millette. Free agent Ardarius Washington Free agent So you got a lot of free agents And I'm sure I'm probably Forgetting somebody too uh, You got Jalen Armour Davis um, Who has just He ain't been out there So there's still a big Question mark on him I honestly don't even think It's a guarantee That he makes the team Next year Because it's, it's getting To that point You got Pepe Williams He hasn't been out there Either So I feel like It's the same way With him So we'll see But Ravens have a lot of question marks. Marlon Humphrey still on the team. Brandon Stevens still on the team. And both of those guys are good. But you want more. You want more and even more quality depth. So with these questions, uh, Team Keep It Clean seem to be on the same page. Let's read them. It came from Wesley. He said, hey, Graven, loving the content. Keep grinding, bro. You have came a long way from the first video I saw of yours. I appreciate you, Wesley. Thank you for even watching it. He said, anyways, Dolphins are expected to release Xavier Howard. Ravens could use some depth at the cornerback position, and I feel that last season we were close to trading for him. Yeah, that was a couple years ago. <laughs> I think um, 2021, I want to say. But, yeah, it was a couple years ago that where they were close. It was when the year Marcus Peters got hurt, when he went down with injury. Uh, they were close to trading for him because it came out like after the fact. But um, and, and I remember there was a lot of a, a lot of conversation about that. The way that I felt about it, I'm like, hey, go all in. Marcus Peters is out, and I uh, said, deal with the contracts at the end of the season. But right now, I was like, right then and there, get them, go for it, get after. But it obviously didn't come to fruition. But anyway, he said, um, what are the odds that we sign Xavier Howard? Or do the Ravens have too much going on already with attempting to resign all these free agents we have coming up? Gus, Zyla, Matabike, Geno, Clowney. Gus ain't coming back. Zyla, I don't think is coming back. Matabike, I think he'll be there. Geno, uh, he's going. Clowney, I think he, he, there's a big possibility of him too. And he says, speaking of Clowney, Emmanuel Agua is also expected to be released by the Dolphins. <laughs> Well, God, he wasn't old, man. I love it, though. I love it. I, um, I hate them people who've always been trying to kill people's vibe. They be like, Ugh. That's unrealistic. That'll never happen. That's not going down. Don't even ask about it. Don't even talk about it. You're wasting your time. Get out of here. Have some fun, man. Jeez. Anyway, um, Xavier Howard, uh, he's an interesting one um, because ooh, he, uh, but Xavier Howard, uh, I, I know most Ravens fans when they think. <laughs> When they think of Xavier Howard, they think of uh, Rashad Bateman beating him on that inside slam for like 75 yards, something like that, man. And hey, he, he, got, he got him. Rashad Bateman got him, man. Um, with Xavier Howard, the thing, my, my thing, Xavier Howard can obvious, he, he's, he's like Marcus Peters to me. That's what he reminds me of. He's a, a cornerback that, I mean, not over the past couple of years. He ain't really been getting picks over the past couple of years. But he's a cornerback that will normally get a bunch of interceptions. But he'll have the <laughs> blame when he get a lot of yards. But Xavier Howard will be he'll be solid. But I don't um I don't think Ravens would be wanting to invest the type of money that he would probably command um into another corner, especially when they got Brandon Stevens still. 
Uh, you got Marlon Humphrey, and and, and not only that, I, with Brandon Stevens, I'm excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, with the Baltimore Ravens as a whole, um, they even with the salary cap going up, they got some more money, but that doesn't necessarily mean they got more money. Guys could ask for more money. That with the salary cap going up, yeah, they technically do have more space, but every team does. So since every single team got even more space now, then that means the players' values, they went up too. So they're going to be asking for even more money now because the salary cap went way up. So these players going to be their salaries. They're going to want their salaries to go way up too. But I, I just don't foresee the Baltimore Ravens signing Xavier Howard. I, I, I don't see it at all. Um, he is somebody that he had been hurt a lot here and there. But over the past couple of years, he's played in a lot more games. Because um, this year, he played in 13 games. Last year, he played in 15. Previous year before that, he played in 16. Previous year before that, he played in 16. Then in 2019, he played in 5. 2018, he played in 12. So it was a little wishy-washy early on. But he's been overall healthy. I know he had some injury that he was dealing with this year. I forgot what it was. But um, I don't think it would, would happen. Uh, not because it wouldn't be a good fit. Because it would be nice, like... Again, it takes me back to last year. I was going to say it would be nice because it would be a, 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 a sort of ball hawk cornerback. Um, and that would be nice to compliment Marlon Humphrey and Brandon. But we didn't have a ball hawk cornerback last year. And we did just fine. We had the best defense in the league. And they got wasted, man. It's so annoying, man. It's so annoying, man. Thinking about it, it is so annoying. They wasted it. Wasted it. Oh, my goodness, man. It's so frustrating. They wasted it. It, they waste. Well, the Ravens overall wasted that defense. The defense ain't waste nothing. The defense was great. They were amazing, but overall, the Ravens' lack of ultimate success ended up wasting that defense. Oh my goodness! And then you think about like the Forty Nineers, and oh, you, it's so it's so annoying. It's so annoying. But um, as far as Xavier and Howard, I just. I, I don't I don't see it happening. I wouldn't mind if it happened, but I don't see it happening. Next question came from my guy Elijah. He said, "Sneaky signing." And Graven, hope you and the family are doing well. I know that nursery already set up for the little flock bundle of joy that you <laughs> that you'll be soon blessed with. Hey, appreciate you, man. He said, "Stay ready, so you ain't got to get ready." Hey, I, hey, there you go. He said, "One of the sneaky signings I hope EDC looks into is Bryce." Huff. If we can somehow convince him to come to the Ravens, he will be a great fit for our linebacker core. He was a rotational player this past year for the Jets, a brilliant pass rushing specialist. That's him. And he got like, don't he got a real ugly number for a pass rusher? Because I remember w watching the Jets before and seeing him make plays. I, is it like 44? Let me look it up. I ain't got ain't to gotta do the leg work, man. Just got to look it up. Ain't got to try to overthink it or nothing like that. Let me look at Bryce. Oh. I just put Bryce Jeff Jets. Bryce Huff Jets. I'm over here putting words together. All right. His number. Oh, 47. 47. Okay. So that was close. So yeah, ugly number. But hey, he made plays. Um, he said a brilliant pass rushing specialist. Even as a rotational player, he recorded double digit sacks. Now it won't be easy, but if anybody can pull it off his EDC big trust. You a hey, we <sighs> see. It's frustrating all over again. Because I was going to say, we could always use some more pass rushes. We had Jadavion Clowney. We got nine and a half. I think Calvin Oy got like eight or nine sacks. I forgot how many he had. But so we had guys that produced sacks. But then you look at those guys are free agents. We still got a Dafi away. But it's like we could always use pass rushes. But again, it makes me think of last year where we did have pass rushes. And we produced. Matt Abike, he produced two. And they wasted it. Wasted it. <sighs> anyway, he said, now, if he don't pull it off, I don't doubt EDC will make one of those sneaky one-year team-friendly deals, but this signing could have a secure a a position for down, down for four years down the line. Yeah, that would be an interesting one, man. Um, I would like that. I, 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 like, I like that idea. I, I really, really do. Um, young guy, pr productive guy, because that's always nice when somebody is productive. Um, cause it, it, at that point it's not just based off of potential cause potential is cool. Potential is great, but actually seeing that potential get reached, that's even better, uh, in my opinion, because when that potential is getting reached, it's like, oh, okay. 
it's it's all coming to fruition. Everything that the teams had hoped about, everything that they envisioned when they selected that player, when they signed that player, it it starts happening. So that's a, a beautiful thing. Let's see how many sacks he got. What he got like ten, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So he got ten last year. So he's been playing since twenty twenty. Um, and again, sacks don't tell the whole story. But in twenty twenty, he got two. In twenty twenty one, he got two. In twenty twenty two, he got three and a half. And then this year, poof, shot up to ten. So there's been some improvement. Maybe it was his playing time. Maybe it was his um the opportunity increased. Cause it said in in his rookie year he played fourteen games. In twenty twenty one he played nine games. In twenty twenty two he played fourteen games. And then this year he played seventeen. So I think that's it. Um, and they said he didn't. Not even a starter. Not even a starter. So again, like you said, you did say pass rush specialist. So I think the Jets they must have certainly looked at him like that as well and been like, oh yeah, 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 he is definitely a pass rush specialist because they probably brought him out for pass rushing downs and said, hey, Bryce, go hunt. Next question came from my guy Robert. He said, what's up, Engraving? Pray all is well with you and the fam. Appreciate that. He said, I have two questions. One, with the recent struggles and injuries with Rashad Bateman and the lack of production from Adafi away, do you believe it would be a good idea to let them walk? Oh, it's tricky. Um, well, Rashad Bateman, I um, I've been thinking about this a lot. Even after I said that, I, I hope that they pick up the fifth year option. Um, and I do like if I wish they could like put it on pause for a year and be like, all right, we we won't pick it up now, but we put it up, pick it up next year. But you can't do that. You got to make a decision this year. I just um, mm, I just want to see if they can get him involved. Like Odell Beckham Jr., we'll see what happens with him. Um, but even if he's gone, even if well, regardless of what happens with Odell Beckham Jr., I think he's going to be gone. But regardless of what happens with him, get Rashad Bateman more involved. Um, and we just got to hope that he has a healthy offseason because that's been one of the biggest things. He ain't been healthy. He, he has not been healthy. And, and, and you mentioned it, too. You said with the recent struggles and injuries with Rashad Bateman. So, yeah, he ain't been healthy. But um, it's... The off script stuff, where there's the struggle. I mean, it's just it's the on script stuff too. It's just him and Lamar. Just they, they lack that connection, man. They really do. They lack it. Um, so I I would want to give it one more year. So I guess I actually would. I guess I would actually change my uh, change my mind on the Rashad Bateman fifth year option. I guess I would decline it for now, um, and just hope that he has a Patrick Queen type. Of uh, fifth year option declined uh, because it's gonna be he was drafted in 2020 so 2020 2021 2022 no he wasn't yeah I thought he was drafted in 2020 or was it 2021 maybe it's 2021 I think it was 2021 so 2021 2022 2023 uh, so yeah it was 2021 um, it's the third year and <clears throat> and it's not all his fault now some is on Lamar, some is on him, some is on... So it ain't all on Rashad Bateman. So let's make sure that's clear. Because there have been times when he's been open and Lamar just straight up missed him. So there have been times when he dropped. And then there had been a, him being hurt. So there, there's been a lot of all of that. But um, in year four, uh, we can't keep hoping for potential. We can hope for it, obviously, but you can't keep banking on it because something's got to give um so i guess again yeah i guess i would change my tune on the fifth year option and i would decline it for now and just and but decline it but really try to get him involved this year Re like really try it really try um and just try to get the most out of him hope he has a healthy off season and then just go from there but um i think that with that being said with rashad bateman uh yeah, that's what I would do. So not letting them walk, but just seeing how this fourth year goes. Declining the fifth year option and seeing how the fourth year goes. And the same with a Dafe away. Um, just hoping that they can get some production, more production. Because they're not bad players. They just ain't turned that corner yet. They're not bad players at all. They just ain't turned the corner yet. And sometimes, hey, sometimes a change of scenery is needed in order to really get the best out of somebody. So that could be, who knows, so... I guess we'll see eventually. So, yeah, same with Odafi away. Anyway, he said, and what do you think about EDC creating a Florida all-star team going after Hollywood and Calvin Ridley? You, hey, you know my answer to that. I know you know my answer already, so I ain't, it, that's not even a question. 